So I started working on my next project. It's going to be a solar water heater. It's going to go on top of the roof behind the house. And uh, I, before we even moved to Kenya, I was planning on building this. So I, I bought two lengths of black hose when I was in the United States and brought them with me. And this is what the water will go through to heat it up. This is my makeshift design. The measurements are coming together as I build it. But basically here's the slope of the roof and there'll be a big platform of, of wood on top. And then I have to support it with different lengths to make sure that it's level. And uh, on this platform there will be a big tank that's 230 liters. And then coming off of it will be this coiled hose. And I do have a solar powered water pump that I plan on putting in one end of the tube to force the water through. But uh, I'm almost sure that eventually that's going to quit working. So to compensate for that or to allow for it to continue working even if I don't have some kind of water pump on it, I fashioned eight of these wedges of wood and those will go underneath the hose to hold it up at a level or at an angle. So the bottom is down low and then the top is a couple inches higher. And the theory is that um, as water or hot particles rise, so the cold water will come in at the bottom and hopefully it creates a natural current as the water heats it up and it flows around through all the coils until it reaches the top and then goes back into the tank. That's my theory. We'll see if it works or not. And to mount the, the platform on the roof, I have to make several brackets. It's hard to find things in the stores here, especially the part of Kenya where I live. I know you can get things if you go into Nairobi, but where I am, they don't have everything that you might look for. So instead I bought uh, six meters of this one inch by quarter inch uh, metal flat bar, and I am fabricating these brackets. So this will go on the roof, and the leg will come down in here, and then I'll bolt through it. And I've got six of those on the way, so there are the five of them. When we had the house built, we knew we wanted to have hot water someday. So we told the, the guys who were building it to make it possible. And of course they made it possible, but they didn't make it easy. So underneath there, I don't even know if you can see it very well, there are two pipes sticking up. One is the cold water coming from the tank, and the other is a pipe that will be the hot water return. Over here, there's our water tank up there. And one of those green pipes heads down into the ground and brings the water into our house. And the platform will go up here. It'll go up to that next set of nails that are holding the roof on. So there's a beam of wood going across there, and a beam of wood going across here, and another one down here. So I'll have six legs, you know, one on each side of the platform going up there. And it's overkill, it's bigger than it needs to be, but at least it'll be strong by the weight of the water. Hey, you two. Hey, you two. What are you doing? Yesterday I put a primer coat on all of the legs that are going to support the platform for the solar water tank. So those are the longest pair. And then the middle pair and then this will go all the way up at the top and these are the brackets that I fashioned out of one inch flat bar Got a couple holes that go down into the roof and then a, a nice big bolt to go through the legs and a couple of screws just to anchor it a bit more today I'm going to paint these with primer and put a second coat of whatever random color I've got on these all of my metal brackets have been primed and painted, and now it's just a matter of waiting for them to dry before I attach them to the roof. So I have the six brackets attached to the roof, the four corners, and then 
two in the middle. I'll use this to uh, attach the legs and make sure that the tops are level. Once the legs are attached, then I'll bring up the platform and attach it. You know, it's usually not too hot here where we live in Kenya. We're about 80 miles south of the equator. But when you're up on top of the roof in the middle of the day, it gets a little warmer. I'm attaching the first leg to the roof. I've got a brace so it's vertical. I forgot to film the process, but I got the platform up on top and covered it with several pieces of 1x6. And then instead of painting it, I just covered it with a couple sheets of this black plastic. It's pretty heavy stuff. And on top, I've attached those eight pieces of wood to create the, the cone shape. And I'll attach those two sheets of metal on there today, one on each half, to, to finish the, the cone. All right, the first half is on there. Nice little cone. So there it is, the cone of metal and the garden hose laid out on top of it. Hello, cow. I've laid the hose in place and then I have separated them with nails between each one, which allows the sun to pass through maybe a little bit and reflect off of the sheet metal to keep the two more thoroughly. In theory. Well, today I went and did it. I drilled holes in the tank, so there's no turning back now. Uh, this side, this is a water inlet. And I put a, a valve on there so I can stop the flow if I need to. On the other side of that inlet is this ball float. I haven't attached it yet. So when it fills up, it will turn off. So on the other side out here, this is the water out. This will flow back to the house. So cold water in and hopefully hot water out. Over on this side is where the coiled hose will go. And uh, this one is lower so that takes the colder water into the coil where it goes around and around and slowly rises up. And then when it comes out of the coil, it goes back into that one. It's about a difference of three, three and a half inches. So time will tell. Now I've got to climb up on the roof and attach it to the pipes that are already coming out of the house. I have attached blocks of wood around the base of the tank so it would stay in place, and I painted it. I got tired of painting down there and waiting for it to dry, so I kind of painted it in place, which should also help seal it to the plastic and fill any holes that I made with the screws. I'm getting ready to attach the hose to those two spots. It is sunset. The best time to do roofing work. And the cows are all coming home. Hi, cow! Mommy and baby. And the rest of the cows, maybe you can hear them. Over there on the hillside. So there it is, isn't it pretty? But hopefully it works okay. I'll secure the hose over here a little bit more tomorrow. The green pipe connecting it to the pipes that come out of the house. Well, sun is set and I have it all connected. You can hear the water pouring in there. So far no leaks, but there's really no pressure behind anything. The hardest part was sitting on this inclined roof cutting and melting pipe together. And then we those wonderful people who... Oh, it's too dark now. The situation that the people who built the house left me with. Trying to get that pipe connected under the roof right there. The tight spot. I've got my shut-off valve going in for the water supply. 
and we've got shut off the from the power for the hot water return. Here is uh, water from the cold tap, so from the, the bigger tank up above behind me, and it is sitting at 70.5 degrees. Now I'm going to try and get a measurement of what's happening in this tank, see if it's any different, even though it's it's only like 10 in the morning and it's been mostly cloudy today. But let's see what see what we've got going on. It's hard for me to say, even though it's climbing up. Ooh, no, it just went down a little bit. Oh, it's going back down. Oh no. Looks like it's not doing anything worth anything yet. That's the same temperature that it was before. Oh, it's dropping lower. It's colder. It's a water cooler. So I'm trying this little experiment. I put some blue food coloring down at the inlet for the hose that is supposed to pull in the cooler, colder water. So my theory is that if it starts flowing, that after a bit, oh, some bubbles just came out. How exciting! After a bit, the blue food coloring, that water should get sucked through the tube and come out over on this side. I got out my solar water pump, and it's still partly cloudy here so right now. It's kind of periodic, but I can hear the, the pump churn and then stop and then churn and then stop. So I've got it in the water inlet. I put some food coloring in there, but still no sign of it coming out the other side. Ooh, you know what? Yeah, I don't think you can see it on the camera. You know how the, the water gets shimmery when there's a hot and cold difference? I can see the little waves in the water there. I can see the heat rising out of that tube. I really do see it. Two important things to note here. First, and most importantly, Tusker, which makes beer here in Kenya, started making cider, and it's actually pretty good. So I've got a mission now. I need to drink more of this. I'm going to paint these black and line the outside of the tank with them to help insulate the tank. It takes 32 of them to uh, fill in all the little holes around the tank. I've got, including the few that I've got in the fridge, I think I've got 16 so far. So I'm on a mission. I attached a, a longer rubber hose to the end of my pump and shoved it into the hose on the water intake side. And a ton of bubbles have been coming out. So I guess there were more bubbles trapped in my hose than I thought. So there, the bubbles are coming out, but, and I can see the, the heat difference in the water now, it's, it's very visually apparent to me. I just don't know if the camera's picking up on it or not. But I can really see the heat coming out of there now. I also sprayed, I squirted more blue food coloring in there, but it hasn't come out the other end yet, so it, maybe it just takes a long time for water to travel through 100 feet of hose. Ooh, my blue food coloring is coming out. It took a couple of minutes. But there it is, it is coming out. Stuff is happening, I'm so excited. 80. That's not bad. I'll take 80 degrees coming out on the other end. It's that magic moment. It's toward the end of the day, the sun is behind a cloud right now. It's about 4.30, I guess. And let's see how high we got. Hey, look at that. I can accept that. And it wasn't the sunniest of days. It was pretty good, but not the, sometimes there's not a cloud in the sky. 90, 91. Look at that. I would call that success. Here I am at the end of the first day of the solar water heater working. And it was successful at raising the temperature from about 70 degrees up to 91 degrees. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And it wasn't the sunniest of days either. Uh, the next trick will be to insulate this somehow to make sure that the heat that I do gain, I can retain it. And this is my first attempt at that. Those are my apple cider cans that I painted black earlier today. And... Uh, use some silicone to attach them. So I've got to drink a few more so I can put a double layer on, on all of these spots and fill in the last few gaps. The, there are several on the other side too. But overall I'm pretty pleased, this being my first attempt at a solar water.